My name is Christine Simpson. I live on Cedar Avenue in Tacoma Park, Maryland. <coughs> I live on Cedar Avenue in Tacoma Park, Maryland, about two blocks from the Tacoma Metro Station. I support sensible development at the station, but I do oppose the current redevelopment plan because it is too big and does not fit in well with the surrounding neighborhood. <clears throat> I'm asking you, WMATA, to require the developer, EYA, to engage in real public dialogue with our community before you move this project along. Here are my reasons. EYA has not communicated in any meaningful way with those of us who live near the development. It has only held one public meeting in August 2013. Although it claims to have held other public meetings, in fact, those meetings were by invitation only to certain select individuals. There's also a lot of confusion about the plan. The materials that are publicly available are inadequate and raise more questions than they answer. For example, the drawings that are included in the docket are too tiny or blurry to be legible, even with magnification. The docket includes no massing studies. Those are the drawings that depict the building in three dimensions. We need massing studies that include the adjacent apartment buildings so that we can see how well the proposed structure fits with its surroundings. There have been massing studies in the past. Why not now? Is it because they so clearly reveal the massive size of the proposed building? Likewise, there are no floor plans. The floor plans give the best idea of how the ground floor would relate to Eastern Avenue. People who have been following this issue closely disagree on how far the building is proposed to be set back from the Eastern Avenue curb. Is it now only 13 feet? Was it 23 feet before? And where are the loading docks? Are they still located on Eastern? Is it really an improvement if they've been moved to the public access road? Pedestrians and cars, when they enter the station, will still have to cross in front of these loading docks. Such a path endangers pedestrians and is ripe for traffic backups. These are details, but they are important details, and they are unclear in the information currently available. The Tacoma Metro Station is unique. It is located on a jurisdictional boundary line adjacent to a historic residential community. While I have heard that WMATA typically expects issues of design to be worked out by local zoning boards, in this case, the local board is the DC Zoning Commission, and Marylander, Marylanders will have no guaranteed right to participate. There is plenty of authority for you, WMATA, to require the developer to engage in real design dialogue. The public notice for this very hearing states, as others have said, that the WMATA Compact requires the board, when it is amending the mass transit plan, which it would be doing by approving this redevelopment, to consider to consider conditions in the transit zone, which includes the district and Montgomery County, Maryland. And the list of conditions that the board is required to consider includes factors affecting aesthetics and preservation of the beauty and dignity of the nation's capital. Requiring EYA to work with the community on design thank concerns you. would be a way for WMATA to meet this obligation under Th the compact. Thank you very much. I urge you thank to you. delay your vote. Thank you. On the staff report that will follow the compact Th hearing until EYA, in fact, thank engages you very much. in real conversation with the community about design thank issues. You, thank, thank you, you very much. James Luigi, and, and to be followed by Antonio Estrada. Good evening. Uh, my name is James D. Luigi. My wife and I have lived in the same address in Tacoma Park for more than 40 years. I have voluntarily served my community in various capacities over these years. Uh, currently, I'm Vice President of Historic Tacoma, an organization uh, with memberships addressing historic aspects of Tacoma in both D.C. and Maryland. I'm an architect with sufficient expertise in both residential and commercial development. I'm also a nationally recognized expert on accessibility regulations, including the Americans with Disabilities Act and various state and city accessibility regulations. I'm here to ask and encourage that WMATA board do its rightful duty by rejecting this development proposal and to instead direct the developer to work effectively with local community to create an acceptable proposal that is sensitive to the neighborhood which it will inhabit. The basis for which WMATA should do so is as follows. One, section one of the WMATA Joint Development Policies and Guidelines identifies 10 objectives for developers to enter, who enter into a development agreement with WMATA. This proposed development plan fails to meet a number of those objectives, not the least of which are relative to safe pedestrian and bicycle access. 
It is my understanding that the WMATA board may have indicated a disinterest in the design of aspects of this proposal. If so, such a position would be clearly disingenuous considering both the development objectives adopted by WMATA and the fact that WMATA staff has actively participated in defending certain aspects of the design during past public hearings. The gentleman on the right is, or on the, your left, is one of those persons. Two, the proposed design grossly exceeds currently applicable zoning regulations. The primary purpose of such regulations is to protect neighborhoods from the negative impacts of inappropriate developments. This is accomplished by various methods, one of which is properly allocating densities by means of height restrictions and building setback lines, both which would be violated by the proposed development. In addition, the proposed design, as has been presented by the developer in various iterations, is incompatible with the existing historical neighborhood in terms of scale, massing, and materials, as well as not being compatible with vehicular, bicycle, and pedestrian circulation paths. Third, the proposed design is not representative of a healthy environment. Virtually all of the living units look across narrow courtyards and other, other traffic and broadways which are very close proximity to the building. Since I only have a few seconds left, I would just add, I urge that WMATA not approve this project at this time, but rather have the developer work with the local community interest groups and neighborhoods to the property to create a design that is reasonably acceptable and supportable. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Antonio Estrada to be followed by Ruth Foster. Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Antonio Estrada. I'm a Tacoma Park resident. I'm an MBA in finance, mechanical engineering, and recently an executive and life coach. My motivation to talk here today is that we all have an opportunity to make a difference here because we are all in this together. Uh, it's June 2014. And it's been 52 years since Silent Spring, Rachel Carson's book that started the environmental movement, was released. It's been already eight years after the movie Inconvenient Truth was in the movie theaters. So nowadays we, are all have, we all have great awareness about the unsuspected adverse consequences that wrong size developments, as the one proposed, can cause. I want to emphasize here four reasons that um, why all the parties involved in this project want to make a difference. The first one, we have the opportunity to develop a right-sized development that becomes a smooth transition between Tacoma, D.C. and Tacoma Park, Maryland. This means that no section of the development should exceed the height of the existing neighboring buildings. Now, the proposed plan requires to go as high as 72 feet. That's 80% above the actual neighboring buildings. Also, the proposed number of units is now, just six years after 2008, 235% larger. Uh, these numbers are not aligned with right size development. The second opportunity we have is to enhance green spaces. As of now, the project calls for the elimination of part of the 50 feet f uh, landscape buffer. So what is planned is really a reduction of the green areas instead of the, the, the proposed, uh, the, the set enhancement. Again, we are confident that this project be revised and conform to uh, what we want to have. The third opportunity we have is to expand the parking area to cover the growing needs, not only of the current residents, the residents, but also of the increased needs that the area will experience with the new residents. In this regard, it doesn't make sense that as a result of the proposed project, parking spaces will be reduced by 40%, and we all want residents to park and ride. This is not incentive, uh, motivating that. And finally, I think the fourth reasons that we can uh, take advantage of this opportunity is that because we all want that the developer and also WMATA uh, are awarded for this uh, project. You know, we can really make a difference in the community and we can give uh, set a landmark that can be an example for the future uh, developments. Thank you. Thank you. Ruth, Ruth Foster to be followed by Elise Ambrose. Hello. I was uh, included in the development of the Tacoma Metro Station. So I'm very familiar with what happened in the beginning. I also know that WMATA can't be trusted to keep its word. 
because it did not do a lot of things that they said that they were going to do. Uh, my problem is with the traffic study that EYA did, I want to know why you didn't use the statistics that the D.C. government uh, did on the traffic study in this area. You could have used them, and if you didn't agree with them, you would have had a chance to refute what they said, but you chose not to do that. Um, Piney Branch and Eastern, that's always been a failing intersection, and even with the light there, it has not helped a great deal. And there's no way to widen that to make things any better. Um, Blair Road, 4th Street, that area in Carroll, all of that area, they studied that before. Blair Road is a secondary road, and uh, 4th Street, the buses use, and the parking for the businesses on that street. There's no way to change the configuration of that. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to live with it. And you should take into consideration the development in, in, the, in the area. You know, for instance, um, Walter Reed, reuse, which estimates 2,197 vehicle trips during peak hours. Tacoma Central, 235 to 255 Carroll Street, the proposed development of a, um, a brownstone into 160 rental apartments and approximately 8,300 square feet of on-street retail located near the Tacoma Red Line Metro Station, Tacoma Park, 6924 Willow Street, and it goes on. It's about eight other things that you have not considered. Another thing that I want to say is that you also have to in, uh, consider the environments, mental, um, especially the air quality control. I live on Piney Branch, and when they had the traffic going south on AM and north on PM, I have a side porch, and we couldn't sit out there at all because the air was so bad you couldn't breathe it. You'd start choking and coughing, and your eyes would start running. So what makes you think that when you put all this traffic in this area, it is not going to affect the air quality in this area? All of that needs to be taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Elise, Elise Ambrose to be followed by John Rechtenwald. Hi, I'm Elise Ambrose. I'm pretty sure there won't be any applause when I'm finished because <laughs> I'm actually for the development. I think uh, the development, this is the most recent picture I've seen. I think it's interesting that everybody has opinions as to what <laughs> EYA has done wrong when the design actually hasn't been finished, has hardly been started. Um, I have been to a few meetings with the EYA. Then buy, they didn't buy me lunch, but I don't know why. I not, not, wouldn't wouldn't uh, be bought quite that cheaply in any case. But um, I understand that they have fixed some of the problems with the setback from Eastern Avenue. And the 72 feet that everyone keeps talking about is actually up against the metro. It is, you know, well set back from anything anybody's going to see at street level or even from a second story of their house across the street. So my understanding is that 16 years is what EYA has been involved with this project for. Uh, that's absurd. Tacoma Park, that, bill, that, that development should have gone three years ago. <coughs> Although, granted, they weren't right about the townhouses. They were, I think that was a silly development. There's 200, I think around 200 units. If anything, I think it's um, not dense enough for a, tr a major transit, transit hub that costs a huge amount of money to uh, maintain. I didn't laugh at you. I'd appreciate it if you'd give me the same respect. Um, so at any rate, I'd like to say that I think it's, it's a great development. I think there will be a lot of changes in the design as it goes forward. I'm sure the neighborhood, I'm sure UIA will hopefully hold a lot of meetings and dispel some of the rumors that are wandering around uh, continuously here. So thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Uh, John Rechtenwald to be followed by Valerie Tennant. Hello, I'm John Rechtenwald. Uh, I'm a registered architect. I've been involved with urban planning, site planning, uh, and professionally 
uh, and involved with those transit stations. Could you hold it a little okay. closer? Thank you. I'm sorry. You know, I'm writer said architect. I've been involved with uh, ur with urban mass transit and and uh, site planning, city planning, uh, as well as architecture. And I can say that uh, in my experience, uh, that this site could hold a lot more development rather than less. Uh, the the you know, community through input has decided that a lot of the site should be set aside for public use, uh, which is admirable, and I think it reflects well upon upon uh, Metro. Uh, I think that also that that Wamata. Oh, sorry. I think that Wamata is is uh, very well aware of what its responsibilities are in the process that we're undertaking here. I think this is part of a continuing effort on the Wimata's part to, to be able to develop their site, which they have every right to do. And I also think that it's very reflective upon the community that there is all the input and has been gone for, for many years, uh, far more than my experience would ever suggest could, could take place. It's kind of Guinness Book of World Records kind of thing in my experience. Uh, but, you know, as far as accessibility, circulation, interim parking, I mean, you know, those things uh, obviously are, the, uh, are part of this and, and the, result is the reason for this, this particular uh, hearing. Uh, and once that is set, my understanding is that it will allow the architect then to look at where, what, the, what the floor elevations are, um, the, the configuration of the first floor, you know, as well as the, the configuration of the building. So once those things are settled, then I think the time comes to look at whether this is what people like or they don't like, uh, because what you'll have, what I, my understanding of the process will, be, will give is the, defi the, the final definition of what now is the base that you can build a building on. So that, this has to happen first. It seems to me though the community will be well, well served and uh, you know, as it intends to be. Uh, but when you get all said and done, I think it's an excellent you know, process. I think the process that, that will, will provide for some real economic base, you know, it's gonna be positive for Tacoma Park. Um, and I think that, it, that uh, it'll be something everybody can be proud of and, in this, and the process should go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Valerie Tennant to be followed by Bill Wald. Hi, um, I'm a commercial property owner directly across from the metro station that's currently uh, being leased by 7-Eleven. And there's a, a huge development going in right behind 7-Eleven, which um, is within the zoning requirements and completely dwarfs um, the 7-Eleven property and the home that's right next door. It's cut off the light to the, the homeowner's property um, even cutting down some of his tree limbs. Um, and s it does impact um, the people in the area. They really don't need to go above the zoning height for it to already, it's already dwarfing the neighborhood. Um, one of my uh, big pet peeves is the loading dock that's planned on Eastern Avenue where trucks would have to stop on Eastern Avenue, back up over the sidewalk. Um, there's pedestrians going by, bicyclists. How are they gonna even see if a bicycle is coming? It's just not safe. And there needs to be that buffer between the apartments and this huge building. They don't need a, a driveway taking out the green space buffer. It needs to be re redesigned so that the green space stays by the apartments and that the loading dock is not a danger. Um, the Tacoma Central District plan calls to improve pedestrian environment and quality of streetscape, especially to and from the metro, and make major pedestrian corridors pedestrian friendly. So they are, their plan really needs to follow that kind of design. Um, EYA's traffic study, I don't believe, incorporates the massive development that's already in progress um, right across the street and then several more that are planned already so that 
if they think that, you know, oh, well, a few more cars aren't going to have an impact, I disagree. Um, I, I don't think their traffic study is accurate. And I do believe that EYA should be required to work with the suggested neighborhood group and come up with a plan that would fit better in and be safe for the community. Th thank you. Uh, Bill Wald to be finished, to be followed by Linda Gray. Actually, m my name's Rod Nordheimer, uh, filling in for my partner, Bill Waldy, if that's okay. Um, I checked in uh, up front and they had made that change, so. Okay, if they, if they let you do that at registration then. They did. Okay. Great, good evening, my name is Rod Nordheimer. I'm a principal uh, with the company that owns 7036 Eastern Avenue, which is the apartment building located next to the proposed EYA development. The development plan for Tacoma Park Metro raises several concerns for our residents, other apartment building residents, as well as our neighbors. A few of our concerns. The adjoining park that provides an open green space environment for the communi community located between our building and the Metro property was dedicated space in the comprehensive Metro plan. So it's a been an approved uh, dedicated space prior to the metro development. The park setting is used on a daily basis by many Tacoma Park residents. The majority of our residents who've been in the building for over 20 years and residents in other buildings near us have enjoyed picnics and outdoor recreation since the property was dedicated. The proposed plan calls for the main vehicle traffic um, to be right next to 7036 Eastern Avenue, which will take away from the park, the green space environment, um, and it just really needs to be thought out a bit differently. Uh, we believe that actually the main entrance uh, to the property, the new development should be on the other side, um, going south. The park setting serves as a natural setting for birds, wildlife, and the community already lacks this type of open space. Uh, we, we do request that EYA um, leave this space intact. It's a 50-foot buffer. Um, it's actually part of the Tacoma Park Central District. Uh, it states that a 50-foot buffer must always separate our building from the Metro property. I don't know if you all have actually reviewed that, um, but I have a feeling there's certain people in my building and in the buildings next to the building that I own that are uh, going to be you know, pretty uh, uh, direct and that they're not going to let that buffer go away. I certainly won't. Um, the height and scale of the proposed apartment building as it approaches Eastern Avenue is a major concern. The building scale is out of place. It will neg negatively affect our residents, our neighbors, and others. The proposed mass will greatly affect air and sunlight. It is our opinion the building height should mirror 7036 Eastern Avenue and gradually step back higher going towards the metro station. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Linda Gray to be followed by Nick Casey. Good evening. My name is Linda Gray and I represent the Eastmont Cooperative 7054 to 7060 Eastern Avenue. I'm sorry I don't have written testimony. I don't need written testimony. Testimony was written for me and signed by Jack Lester in a letter dated May 27th. The fact that we received this letter has confirmed to us that WMATA and EYA have no intentions of acting in good faith with the affected community. This letter that was sent to the community, including us, states that the new development will turn the underutilized parking lot into a vibrant residential community. The parking lot is not underutilized. Secondly, it says that your input during the design phase is most important to us, and we will be reaching out to the community throughout. There has been absolutely no input from the affected community. Although we've asked time and time again to meet with you, Mr. Wall, you and I shook hands on that at the ANC meeting. 
to this date, we've had no meeting. It further states that all of EYA's neighborhoods blend with surrounding communities and respect their unique characteristics. Well, we don't know that because you refuse to talk to us. And if it looks like some of the other developments at other metro stations, then we already disagree. As we move ahead, we will continue to reach out to the residents. We're still waiting for the first meeting. And so because of this letter being sent to us, which made absolutely no sense to us, we don't believe that you have any intentions of acting in good faith. So what we are suggesting is that you simply stop using these get over tactics to get what you want done and to fully engage the community so that you have a product that you can be proud of and one that we can live with. That's true community engagement and it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Nick Casey to be followed by Leonard Rubin. Hi, my name is Nick Casey and I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. I live in Tacoma, DC and I support this proposal. It will remove an unnecessary parking lot and replace it with badly needed housing. The housing stock in Tacoma is mostly detached single family houses. This gives the neighborhood a quaint charm, but the lack of density makes the downtown a little sleepy. I wish Tacoma was more vibrant. That is a common complaint that I hear from people my age who moved to Tacoma after having been priced out of more central neighborhoods. This development will bring more residents into the neighborhood who will help support local businesses and attract new ones. Some people are saying that this building is too tall. Of course, there are always people who say that about any proposed development. There are already many tall buildings in the neighborhood, including a 10-story building two blocks away in Maryland. Those have not destroyed the character of the neighborhood, and neither will this building. Any questions about zoning will be addressed by the DC Zoning Commission. We don't have all the rights that Maryland residents have in DC. However, I'd like to hang on to the ones that we do have. The only complaint that I might have about this project is that I think it includes too much parking. It has 0.7 spaces per unit, but only 62% of DC households own a car. I'm sure those numbers are even lower for apartments that are right next to a metro station. I used to live in the Cedar Crossing building, which is right around the corner. I always found it easy to park on the street, which is free, so I'm not sure why anyone would pay hundreds of dollars a month to park in a garage. I'm excited to see this project move forward. I hope construction begins as soon as possible and I look forward to welcoming our new neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Leonard, Leonard Rubin to be followed by Thomas Fedewa. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, we have lived, my family and I, on Blair Road since 1965. When EYA and WMATA first came out in the newspaper in the post that they were going to build on the metro site, a group of us got together, including many who have testified here tonight, and wanted to get involved. We didn't like a lot of what was going on. And to cut a long story short, three years later, everything seemed to sort of come to a standstill. But the plan offered by WMATA and not rejected by EYA and not rejected by WMATA remained essentially the same. From the point of view of smart growth and environment and respect for the community, it was irresponsible. Uh, then everything got quiet. Last July, there was a meeting at the uh, 4th Precinct State Police Station and gosh, things looked better. They weren't going to build on the green space. Uh, they were going to build us where there were some, some comments about that. But suddenly I see the height of this new thing. No reference at that time was made to how high this construction would be and how dominant. Uh, the, there is a great deal of dense density going on now. There's two, two on Blair Road 
two apartment uh, complexes. Another across from Omada. Two are being built on Carroll. And Lord knows what will be built behind the CVS on ground owned by Douglas Jamal, I believe. Uh, it seems to me that the whole problem here is that EYA has not been trustworthy and WMATA has not represented itself as a public organization. It has a responsibility to the community which it has not fulfilled so far. We had many hearings back when this first came out to no avail. And I hope that with this hearing and with what I've heard and agree with, uh, that a process is set up so that input from the community is available before EYA comes up with its great ideas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thomas uh, Fedwa, to be followed by Elliot Queen. Mr. Fedwa. All right. Uh, Elliot Queen, to be followed by Cheryl Court. Elliot Queen. All right. Cheryl Court, to be followed by Jesse Thomas. Thanks for the opportunity to testify. My name is Cheryl Court. I'm the policy director for the Coalition for Smarter Growth. We are the leading organization in Washington, D.C. region dedicated to making the case for smart growth. Our mission is to, pro to, pr is to promote walkable, inclusive, and transit-oriented communities and the land use and transportation policies and investments needed to make those communities flourish. We're um, here to express our support for moving this proposal forward and ask the WMATA to approve the proposed changes to WMATA facilities at the Tacoma Metro Station and to advance this joint development agreement. We have followed this issue closely since 2000, and I'm gratified to see that we've come to such a good compromise addressing all the key issues raised by the previous proposal. We support the proposed facility changes and joint development with EYA to construct at least 200 units in a mid-rise apartment building. The new proposal addresses all the key concerns raised by opponents of the previous plan. Most significantly, the plan preserves the large open space in front of the station, something that many people thought was important. The plan will add bus capacity and retain the bus loop and future potential expansion for, for bus um, uh, transit facilities, which were also issues raised in the past. The proposal will enhance pedestrian walkways, reduce under, replace underutilized metro parking, and offer a lower parking ratio for new residents, and bring the drop-off and disabled parking closer to the elevator entrance. We're also excited to see the bike station open shortly. While addressing all the key objections and concerns raised by the original proposal, the new plan offers more than double the housing opportunities that the townhouse proposal did. And this means that more than twice the number of households will have the opportunity to live in more sustainable, low carbon, transit oriented lives. We do want to um, raise the issue related to affordable housing. Originally, um, the DC Council had adopted in its resolution of the, cent of the Tacoma Central District Plan a uh, set aside of 20% affordable housing units. Um, and we have attached to our testimony the report from the 2002 resolution by the, um, by the city. We ask that WMATA honor that and, and go beyond um, the uh, standard law for any private development, which would just be an inclusionary zoning obligation of eight to 10 units um, of uh, moderately priced housing. We urge, in conclusion, we urge WMATA to move forward with this project so it can advance to the, the, to the uh, Zoning Commission where there will be a lot of detailed design and transportation review and where stakeholders and city agencies will have the opportunity to um, provide a lot more input. We're enthusiastic to see this project move forward in order to fulfill the city's goals for creating a more sustainable, transit-oriented um, city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jesse Thomas, to be followed by Robert Whitaker. Hello. Um, thank you for uh, being here and uh, having some community input that is needed. 
Um, I'm standing in support of the current proposal. Uh, I'm noticing I'm quite in the minority of uh, voices here. The, the normal voice that for this seems to be a middle-aged or older person who has a single family home in the area. I rent here. I've only been here for, um, for only a year, and I know people turn their nose up to that and say, well, I've been here for 40 years. But um, I think I add value to this community. I uh, didn't know very much about it um, before coming here. Um, I uh, was priced out of places closer to the city center, but wanted to have a more urban lifestyle, lifestyle and uh, be able to live close to the subway. So I am here and uh, grow to love Tacoma. Um, me and my wife here, um, we've gotten involved with many things, cleanup days, um, the new Tacoma radio station, I'm gonna volunteer for that. Uh, we just had a meeting this week. Uh, my wife is planning on selling some of her uh, homemade products at Trove. Um, she also volunteers at the animal shelter in Georgia. Um, these are the kind of opportunities that Tacoma has offered us and we love that about it. Um, I support the 72 feet and uh, the lots of uh, uh, units that are in this building because it will open that Tacoma up to more people um, that, like me, are interested in community, interested in uh, building relations with neighbors and uh, having something that matters, some kind of value of place. I'm not interested in what Adams Morgan has and I, I'm not interested in like going to bars and spending my money everywhere like the uh, Washington Post likes to present people my age to everyone. Uh, I'm interested in things that are a little more um, lasting, uh, a little more uh, important uh, to me, and those, those values line up with Tacoma well, I think. Um, people that move into this building um, will, will flock to Tacoma because of these things that Tacoma can offer at a more affordable price than other places near the city center. I do think we should make demands, though, uh, this is the first time I've seen that color uh, graphic. It looks okay. I mean, the facade needs to match the, the area. I agree with that. And we need to um, demand uh, as a community that the uh, green space, the existing one that's going to stay, uh, becomes a park. EYA has hinted that they're willing to help uh, fund things. Through that. Right now, it sucks. Like, I went to go play Frisbee there a couple weeks ago because I wanted to play Frisbee, and it was like really tall grass. And I know WMATA is the one that owns that, so they need to do better, and EYA needs to, uh, they have an opportunity to actually improve that. And I think we should really fight for that. This, uh, this is for the future of Tacoma. It's a great place. It seems like that most people are unwilling to share it. And thank I think that's th the problem. Thank you. Robert, Robert Whitaker, um, to be followed by Tracy Kaufman. Uh, my name is uh, Minister Robert Whitaker. I've been living here in the community around 40 plus years, and I don't have a prepared speech, but I have to say this. What attracted me to the area is the bucolic nature of this location in Tacoma Park. It's unlike living in the city, and we'd like it to remain that way. It's a low density area. It has always been low density. 72 foot high building is much too high. It's out of context. It's like the exorcist. That's what this building is like. And that took place over there on Bunker Hill Road near the Matha High School, not over here in Georgetown, as the movie depicted. So that was just kind of area that they're dealing with here. You're telling us one thing, and you're doing something else. You want us to look to the left, and you're going to the right. Now, it is wrong for you to come into a long-established historic community and disrupt the, 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 the tranquility that exists here. We are not in opposition to the building, but 72 feet is too high. Lower the building to like the building that's being built right now right on the Maryland side. 72 foot, no way. We need a low building that's in conformity with the existing federal laws. This, there, there are no apartment buildings per se except the senior citizen building that was mentioned earlier down the street on the Maryland side. That's the only high rise building in sight here. And that's what we like. We come out here and you can breathe fresh air early in the morning. Me and my dog do it for 40 years. Well, he's the third or fourth dog I got that's lasted that long. So anyway, uh, this is like I say, a monster. It's the exorcist, and we know what happened with that type of monster, and we don't want that in this community. Secondly, we can't trust the parties involved because they're all about money. They're never money grabbers. It, it, there's more to life than money. I mean, you need money because that's the new plow. That's how we get things happening. That's how we plow the ground now, with money. 
paper money. But we don't need me money to replace the tranquility and the lifestyle that people are attracted here for. Sure, a big old high-rise building, you're bringing a whole lot of people, and you got all this congestion all of a sudden, all this traffic pollution, all this other stuff that we don't have now. And that's the great thing about living here. It's a wonderful place to raise a family. It's like living in the country, and we want it to remain that way. So we are saying, just because we don't have the right to vote, and we didn't really lose that, it's just with the first exodus from the city, people stopped voting. And now, all of a sudden, we can't vote anymore. But you could always vote in the District of Columbia. There was never no time that you couldn't vote. You don't hear nobody on the Senate Council talking about that. They're talking about making this a state. What the hell kind of situation is that? How could D.C. be a state and it's the capital of the whole country? Come on. You got to have some kind of common sense. What are we paying these people for? Just to keep on sticking their hand in our pocket and taking money and call themselves politicians. Everybody rob the people in the D.C. because ain't nobody going to do nothing about it because we can't vote in Congress and we gave that up. Come on. We're not going to give this up. We're going to fight this thing all the way to the ground. And it's no problem for you all to lower that building below 72 foot, be in conformity with what's already here, and let it stand. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Tracy Kaufman to be followed by Margaret Salazar. Thank you. Um, my name is Tracy Kaufman, and I, my husband and I have lived in Tacoma Park for almost 20 years. And like, like everyone in this room, we love our neighborhood. I believe this is one of those rare moments when a good opportunity presents itself at the right time and hope that we will not allow what I believe to be a vocal minority of people to squander this opportunity. So I have several specific uh, points I'd like to make. Uh, location. We have a location that is not only currently underutilized for the valuable real estate that it occupies, but a site that is appropriate to build on and is begging to be used. Sustainability, uh, we have an opportunity to build a higher density multifamily housing near a transit center. We can all build solar panels and buy ge geothermal systems and push mowers, but these all pale in comparison to our individual consumption for our transportation needs. Uh, size of the project, this seems to be the crux of the debate tonight. Um, originally, I understand this property was designated for many more units. Uh, lots of folks complained and that number has been lowered. To me, this means fewer opportunities to incorporate in affordable units on a site that should include opportunities for low-income people to live. The height of this project is dictated by zoning and planning boards as been talked about before and I believe the height currently slated for this property is appropriate for this location. Easy access. Buses, cars, bikes, and pedestrians all need access to this site. The site offers ample opportunity to coordinate all public access, and I believe that the developer has succeeded in doing this well for many of its other projects. The developer. We have a really good developer with a track record, with a solid track record, who is committed to doing the right thing for our community. Let's try to work with them. Overall design. While the real design phase of this project is yet to come, I particularly like the fact that the development as is currently designed has a parking garage that is strategically tucked into the building. The development team has also created courtyards along the building's eastern facade to add relief and scale to the project. So what I've seen and heard during this conversation over the last several months is a vocal set of friends and neighbors who are appropriately advocating for their own self-interest. I don't begrudge them that but I believe that there are larger neighborhood-wide interests at play as well. This is a long process with lots of opportunity for community input throughout. We should undertake this process with respect, honesty, and open conversation, and not name-calling and personal attacks on those of us with whom you disagree. Let's all agree on one thing. We all want what we believe is best for the community, I, for one, believe thank the building has high-density housing next to Metro. Thank you very with a much. Highly respected thank you. team. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Margaret Salazar to be followed by Alex Salazar. Good evening. My name is Margaret Salazar, and I reside in the Cedar Crossing condo building, which is right next to the Metro tracks and very close to the proposed project site. I am very proud to be a renter here in Tacoma. I am a very strong supporter of the proposed development for a number of reasons. First, it will continue to draw more local businesses to the area, contributing to the vibrant walkability of the Tacoma neighborhood. 
Second, it will help connect the DC side of Tacoma, where I live, with the Maryland Tacoma Park side, creating a more coherent and inclusive experience for all of us. Third, it will improve the green space in front of the metro so that we can all have a usable public gathering space. And finally, it will improve foot traffic so that I feel safer walking around the neighborhood at night. Now, those are my personal reasons for supporting the project because I love residing in this neighborhood and I want to see it continue to thrive. But there's much more at stake. You've heard a number of speakers talk tonight about the need for uh, reduced density and reduced number of units. In my day job, I run national affordable housing programs affecting hundreds of multifamily properties and communities across the country. As an expert in multifamily housing and urban development, I urge you to approve the project with the current number of units and the current density. In fact, we need more units, not less. Here's why. The Washington, D.C. metro area continues to experience tremendous growth. In fact, D.C. was fifth amongst metro areas across the country for population growth last year, according to the census. The Washington Council of Governments reports that we're expected to add 1.7 million more residents by 2040. All of this population growth is putting tremendous pressure on housing costs, and it just underscores the tremendous scarcity in rental housing in our region. In 2013, the Washington Business Journal rated Washington, D.C. region as the least affordable city in America, with median housing prices 16.78 times the median income. Nearly one-third of all homes in the D.C. area cost $500,000 or more. In order to afford a home renting for $1,400 a month, you have to earn at least $56,000 a year. And by the way, good luck finding a home at that price. The evidence is clear. We need more housing options, and we need them yesterday. The proposed development helps us to provide housing for people at a mix of incomes and does it in a smart, appropriate way by setting the units back from the green space and promoting a transit and walkable based lifestyle. We can't turn our back on good development now and wait for a further housing crisis because if we do, we risk making ill-conceived decisions later, car-based suburban development that will harm our environment and destroy our Tacoma urban village way of life. Please continue to support this development with its current density. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alex Salazar to be followed by Lorraine Pearsall. Um, thank you. My name is Alex Salazar. Um, I'll be a little bit briefer. Um, I support everything my wife just said, and she's much more eloquent than I am, of course. Um, I think a, a big reason I support the development is because I know EYA is a really... The, one of the big reasons I support the development is because I think EYA has proven to be a very good partner with these kinds of developments throughout, throughout the region. So I think whatever concerns there are that have been voiced, I think should be left at ease because there will be a whole process that people can give input. EYA, in, in what they have uh, expressed to, to residents who have been willing to listen, is to go through some sort of community process to really listen to their concerns around the, the building, around density, around the park. And I think there's a huge opportunity to bring the community together to actually involve people, particularly in the park, which is very underutilized. Um, uh, you know, Metro has a lot of land. It's probably really hard to manage all of that. This is an opportunity to really redevelop the park in a way that really stitches together the, not just the housing around it, but also uh, the path as people go through it and the uh, businesses that are adjacent to it. And I was speaking, uh, just I'm speaking off the cuff here. I was happy to be speaking to one of the businesses there. They didn't even know that the development at this point was going to redevelop the park as well. And once I told him that, he was just ecstatic because he himself sees that the amount of people who will be coming in once that gets cleaned up will really be a positive benefit to the neighborhood. Um, I think uh, the other reason is, is really from a family perspective. My wife, and I, I, my wife and I moved here a few years ago, and, you know, we love the neighborhood and its character, but we also love a little bit more excitement at night. <laughs> it would be nice to have a few more businesses to go to. And we, we really want it to be a little bit safer so that we're happy walking our kids, our future kids, and our dog, and it's just a really great atmosphere, and I think this development will really improve the overall neighborhood and, and really help people like us who really care, care about the neighborhood and want to live here uh, to continue to live here. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, Lorraine Pearsall to be followed by George French. 
My name is Lorraine Pearsall. I am here on behalf of Historic Tacoma. Historic Tacoma is the local uh, historic preservation group for Tacoma Park, Maryland and Tacoma, D.C. In order to protect our community, we have retained the services of two law firms, the Law Office of Michelle Rosenfeld and also Cultural Heritage Partners. And they have submitted testimony today and will be continuing to submit things to you for the record. Our attorneys request that the WMATA board defer further action and table its consideration of proposed development at the Tacoma Park Metro Station until such time as the FTA has completed its statutory obligations to review the project pursuant to Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act and Section 4F of the Department of Transportation Act. The development, number two, the development is inconsistent with the District of Columbia Central District Plan in several material respects. WMATA's action should be deferred until either the development is redesigned to be consistent with the comprehensive plan or the comprehensive plan is revised with due public process. Number three, an independent review has found that the traffic study performed by WMATA significantly underestimated traffic impacts of the EYA development is inconsistent with industry standard practices and should be redone before the project moves forward. Number four, WMATA with this project is actually in violation of its own policies on, uh, with, uh, re on sound growth for communities. And um, with the density, height, scale, and massing, improper setbacks, and the loss of green space and trees, you are really harming our community and you are causing financial harm to our community with this aggressive development. You're also violating your own policies by not working cooperatively with local jurisdictions. And Mr. Wall, I asked you to meet with Historic Tacoma and near and neighbors and you refused. The green buffer areas that were established uh, long ago were established really as an amenity to our community, and their importance then is, is the same today. And both of the green space buffer areas are cr incredibly important, particularly next to our apartment building, and these treed, mature treed green buffers are important character-defining elements for our historic district, and that's very important. And finally, I'd like to say that in 2000, Attorneys for Historic Tacoma and the City of Tacoma Park requested the final site plan approved by the WMATA Board in 1974 and 75. To date, we don't have it. The site plan approvals carry Thank regulatory you. weight, Thank and you. we ask you to provide it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, George French, to be followed by Marcy Stickle. I have lived in Tacoma Park five blocks from this metro station for nearly 25 years and have relied heavily on this transportation facility since it opened. I have followed this recent development process from the beginning. I have enjoyed the openness of Tacoma Station, the green spaces, the variety of trees so beneficial in so many ways and crucial to the environment. I do not mind the surface lot because it is open, safe supports trees and is a lot less unattractive than structured parking. I do see an advantage to reasonable car-less or car-limited transit-oriented development here, but only constructed on the footprint of the surface parking lot. The testimony of Coalition for Smarter Growth is tainted, not to be trusted. They have a conflict of interest when they accept funding from the developer. And they lobbied hard for the dreadful former project of nearly, two, one, nearly 100 two-car townhouses while saving only a dozen trees in a postage stamp park. It is time for EYA to go. They have had several cracks at this development project and just can't make it work. It is time to open the process back up to other developers, those who would respect the open green space, the two buffering parks, zoning height restrictions, traffic considerations, and the surrounding historic districts. I desire a firm that can use the buffering grove of trees as an enhancement to the new development, not as an obstacle to be removed. EYA designers have failed too many times to present a desirable concept and project. 
Since the beginning of this Tacoma Station development project, there have been hundreds of new units constructed and more to be added to the immediate area. I am opposed to doubling the density on this site from what was proposed earlier. Decreasing the density for an allowable development on the site would have a great effect on retaining more open space, lowering building height, decreasing the traffic and congestion, and increasing access to the station. Also, fewer units means less residential parking space is needed. Another benefit of a less massive project is shorter construction time. Recall, recall the never-ending Silver Spring Transit Station fiasco. WMATA allowed turning a nice open tree accented station into a monument to cracking concrete and construction arrogance. Still unusable after six long years, it has squandered millions of taxpayer payer dollars. Lowering the project proposed density should not harm legitimate developers, developers' ability for financial gain since the land is a virtual gift, a giveaway from WMATA. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Marcy Stickle to be followed by Pamela Ellison. Marcy Stickle, regular Tacoma Park Station Metro user. Maples, magnolia, white pines, beech, elms, huge white oaks, willow oaks, golden rain tree, honey locusts, hollies, chestnuts, Bald cypress, weeping willow create the cool, lovely, fragrant, soothing green grove adjacent to the garden apartments on Eastern Avenue. Celebrate a green theme, a human-scale garden city apartment theme. The grove is a centerpiece to new development. I oppose the currently proposed Wamada EYA gargantuan monolithic structure that swallows up our breathable green space. Construct instead human-scale garden apartments, joining with the existing ones, around the living, breathing grove as their centerpiece. The grove's mature trees provide environmental and health benefits. Lungs of the planet, trees produce and release oxygen, filter pollution from the air, soak up storm water, absorb greenhouse gases, absorb and block noise. Trees provide us and our homes shade and cooling under their canopies, and habitat for wildlife celebrates the grove. Remember, Tacoma Park is tree city. I enthusiastically request that the irreplaceable grove and all of the existing green space at the Tacoma Metro Station be protected legally in perpetuity by WMATA and EYA for future and current generations. That's the park across from the station and the grove. What an enduring visionary gift WMATA and EYA can provide. Promote harmony with nature. The location is already walkable, bikeable, busable, metro commutable to jobs, schools, businesses, entertainment, and recreation. Parking can be incorporated above or below ground. I believe that EY is, EYA is creative enough to be able to incorporate garden city and garden apartment ideals into its new development. Quite an enticement for prospective residents. The Grove, along with its garden apartment, provides an oasis in perpetuity green magnet for new and old residents, as well as new patrons for Metro bus and rail, and to enjoy our historic districts of Tacoma Park and Tacoma, D.C. Garden City principles include development which enhances the natural environment, strong local cultural, recreational, and shopping facilities and walkable neighborhoods, integrated and accessible transport systems. In fact, 75 years later, Greenbelt's New Deal garden apartments were designed and still exist as pristine ribbons lying gently on the land. That's our vision. Thank you. Thank you.